Hello friends, welcome to my new watercolor tutorial. This time, as you can see, I'll be doing something slightly different. This is not just flowers. This time I'm introducing a little hummingbird into my collection of watercolor illustrations. And this entire illustration is actually from my latest coloring book, which is available on Etsy, and I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So the illustration in the coloring book comes as an outline, as you can see here on the screen. And I have an entire page with some inspiration on how you can transfer the illustration to the watercolor paper. I will be using the method was printing where I printed directly on my paper and I printed it with 15 or 17 percent opacity so that I have just the slightest outline on my paper and I think you can go even lower than that just so the lines are not showing through the transparent washes of your mm, painting and to show you a little bit of my setup to the left I always have my mixing palette and I have my watercolors. This is just a mix of different brands and different colors that I put together. And I have a video on my YouTube channel on how I put all of them together. I'm going to leave the link in the description to that as well. I've added a few extra colors to the collection since then. But I will list all of the colors that I'm going to be using today anyway. And I always use the color samples. So that I can see exactly what colors I'm going to be using. I have a scrap piece of paper just for checking the colors. I have two jars of water. One for cleaning the brush and one for picking up the clean water. And I will be using a variety of brushes. I'm going to leave all of the numbers I end up using in the description box. But I'm going to be going with the smaller brushes for this illustration. Because I will be working with a lot of small details. Also in this painting, I will be testing out four new watercolors that I recently purchased from Windsor Newton. These are Seb Green, Turquoise, Fresh and Blue, and Permanent Rose. And I think that for Hummingbird, I'm mainly going to use green and blue in combination with darker green and darker blue. And a little bit of the lilac that would tied up together with the flowers and for the lilac I'm going to try use permanent rose and the brush and blue mix and just a permanent rose alone I think is going to work well for the petals on the flowers so I'm going to squeeze them out into the half pants and put them into my palette I would usually recommend that you squeeze them out into half pants ahead of time and let them dry up a little bit but because I'm short on time um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. You can also just squeeze them out directly onto your palette, but I feel like that wastes a lot of my paints. So I'm adding them right away to my color checker so I can see my colors there since they now gonna belong in my palette. And I'm starting to mix, pre-mix the larger puddles of my colors that I'm starting with. So um, the permanent rose was going kind of with the mix of alizarin crimson and quinacridone red i like to develop variations of colors in my painting it's probably hard to see on camera from this angle but even going within one flower from petal to petal i like to have a little bit of variety between a warmer and cooler usually the petals either warmer underneath or on top of the petal in this case, um, these foxias are usually a little bit of cooler and more muted tone on the outer edge of the petal. So on the inside, they have a little bit more density. The paper I'm using right now is a Canson XL watercolor paper. It's a great paper for doing watercolor paintings and sketches. The only limitation of any kind of cellulose based paper that is not cotton based or doesn't have any percentage of cotton in it is that the paper is very easy to overwork and it's um, when you're working with the cotton based paper something like Arch or any other brand you will be able to lift up a little bit of the watercolor if you feel like you've added too much but when you're working with kind of a cheaper versions of the paper that might not be the case so what I like to do is that I do as much on the first layer when I add as possible. Of course, I like layering and adding details later and it does add a very nice look 
in the end but I'm just trying to add a little bit of definition with where I place my shadows and sort of a um, little bit darker spots of the paint and I'm completing this painting all in one day and in one sitting so this is also a time-saving tip for me when I'm doing as much as possible with each layer and you can of course wait for it to dry up and come back later but I've decided that I'm just want to work rather in a looser style and anytime when I come back later I just start adding way too many details and it always easier for me to just um, stick with the rather abstract shapes in the flowers and in the leaves when I'm doing them just in one sitting and moving fast from flower to flower. Um, in the leaves I primarily used sap green for the warmer shade and I mixed in two shades of the darker green, one with a little bit of the Prussian blue and the sort of the medium green and the darker green had also a little bit of the paints gray creating variety of tones always helps me to add more definition to the leaves and also it's the easiest way in my opinion to just make it clear how the leaf turns and where you see the upper part of the leaf or where you see the bottom part of the leaf because they usually have a little bit of a difference in their tones and I've noticed that the leaves that have warmer colors on the top of it it usually has cooler colors on the bottom so this is just my go-to formula for now um, as you can see I am working both on flowers and leaves at the same time going from one to another with one brush. The reason for that is just I'm trying to develop the upper area of the illustration as fast as possible so I can then move on to the bottom and I'm not going to be smudging too much with my hand because again I'm doing this all in one sitting. I'm not, not waiting for this to dry up. The smudging will happen eventually and you will see a little bit of the green color and I haven't seen it while it was wet. I saw when it dried up, so it was really hard to pick it up later. Um, but even just in general, I work a lot with one brush, as long as I'm just comfortable with the size of that brush. I don't change them for every um, other color. I know some artists do that. They have one brush for warmer colors or they have another brush for um, darker colors or cooler colors. But I think in watercolors it doesn't really matter that much because my colors are mixing on the paper anyway and they're mixing on the palette anyway and it kind of um, adds to the cohesion of the composition overall. So you will see me working with the same brush and I was going between sizes 0 and 2 I believe. Um, I do find it easier to work with a smaller brush and the brush I'm using right now I believe is um, size zero but it's very easy to also get caught up in the details when you're working with a smaller brush and not think of the bigger shapes because I'm also trying to develop a little bit of a looser style in watercolor and be more confident with bigger strokes that I make and with the bigger strokes you want them to lay them down and sort of lay them let them be without over mixing them too much and over blending them too much but when i have a smaller brush i feel like i can blend it out a little bit i can add a little bit of detail here a little bit of detail there and move slower but it's a work in progress and hopefully in the future i'll be able to complete the entire painting with a larger brush for the purples and the lilacs in the middle parts of the flowers, I'm using primarily the mix of the Prussian blue and either alizarin crimson for darker colors or quinacridon red for liberate lighter colors and permanent rose. And just diluting a little bit of the paint already helps me to create the variation between lighter and darker tones. That way I can avoid introducing the unnecessary amount of colors from my palette 
because I'm always happy to do that. I'm reaching out for something that I think is going to create a nicer um, tone for the lighter shades. But when you eventually step back from it and look at it, it just has way too much going on, way too many colors that end up not making sense. So I always recommend to work with the few colors that you started the painting with and see what you can achieve with them and just try to get as much out of that mix as possible. So from here on, I'm just working with the same colors, developing a little bit of the details as my petals are drying up. And I have a few more flowers and leaves to work on so I'm just gonna let you enjoy some music and I'll talk to you again once I start working on the hummingbird. Now that all my primary colors of the flowers are developed, I can start introducing the same mixes into my hummingbird. And I did look at a lot of references to make sure that my hummingbird does look believable because I'm not that familiar with this bird. But I definitely wanted it to have the similar color palette as I have on my flowers so that it looks as a part of the composition and a part as a whole illustration. So the colors that I went with for the hummingbird are the mixes of the blue and green and the lilac. I was debating whether to introduce just a little bit of the pink into the belly or some of the feathers in the wings, but I've decided that already to have a blue on the hummingbird is a different color that sets sort of this um, bird aside from the flowers so I don't need to make all the colors match perfectly I already have something that's different about the flowers and something that's different about the hummingbird and I was working with the first layer of color that I was trying to blend as much as possible so we would have a smoother transitions between the areas of different colors and as the color was drying up I was going over with a little bit of the darker paint and more saturated paint to add more definition to the bird and also add more contrast to the colors. I think I probably went way more saturated than um, the hummingbird is in nature 
but I really enjoyed working with this combination of colors. I think it turned out really well. And I was also trying to work with the spots of the paint where, that I would just lay down and let it be and sort of let it be also a little bit of descriptive of the shape of the bird since it's a quite a little area that I'm working on so I'm, I don't want to overwork it too much but I still being mindful of every brush stroke that I'm laying down and thinking how does that describe the shape of the head or how does that describe the direction in which the feathers are going? I am definitely not painting each individual feather um, with any kind of um, bird. That would be just a crazy idea to do, but even especially with a hummingbird. So I'm just putting little dips of paint that are just indications of separate feathers, especially on the lighter parts of the bird. And... Um, the colors that I'm using for my mixes are all the same colors that I've talked about before. These are sap green for the green and was a little bit of the Prussian blue for the darker colors or paints gray. And for the blue I'm using a cobalt blue and the mixes of the cobalt blue and the Prussian blue and the paints gray. Prussian blue is a very saturated color. It comes in a very dark shade, so if you look just as it is on the dried um, pans or half pans, or if you just squeeze it out of the tube. But when you start diluting it, it looks similar to phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. It's very beautiful when you mix it with green and also with purple. So I'm really enjoying working with this new color in my palette. I'm happy to have it. And I think I want to try more uh, working with it in the future and see what other mixes I can get out of it. And as you can see here, I am doing the same thing that I did with flowers. I'm trying to develop one area before I move on to the next. This also helps me in a way to see what contrast I'm going to be developing for the bird. So when I'm moving on to another section, I can kind of judge better if um, something that I'm laying down on the paper is too light or is it too dark. Um, and I can compare it to the area that I've already developed and I'm happy with. And I can kind of match the rest of the bird to that. This is just my personal approach. You can definitely lay down lighter washes and then go on top of it. I just enjoy seeing smaller sections fully develop before I move, move on to the next one. But again, this is just my personal preference. And as you're going to see here, in fact, I'm going to be working on the belly simultaneously um, with the feathers of the tail and the wing. So the rest of the bird is going to be in one, um, in one flow. And here I'm experimenting with a little bit of the different variations between warmer and cooler purples and lilacs in there in the belly. Because this is a very small section, but I'm still trying to make it interesting to give your eye a space to wander around and give your eye something to look at and uh, in addition to variating the colors i'm also variating my brush strokes so the area where i know the feathers are small i'm working with the very small brush strokes sort of leaving a little bit of the traces from my um, strokes and let them indicate a smaller texture in the feathers and uh, when i'm working with the bigger feathers I'm trying to make them in one continuous stroke to have kind of one fluid um, bits of paint so they will indicate as this one structure, this is one feather. Um, this is just something that I developed as a style when I was working with oils. I've tried to let my brush strokes be descriptive of the area that I'm working on. For example, if I'm working on something small, I'll be working in smaller brush strokes and if I'm moving on to bigger structures, I would 
let my brush strokes kind of travel longer i would pick up more paint and let the paint flow as much as possible and tell the viewer that this is a different structure that this has a different texture um, this is definitely something fun to experiment with you also have to be comfortable with your brushes at this point to know how much paint your brushes can handle how much paint they let it out on the paper right away when you touch the paper and also how much water and liquid to pick up with your brushes so as you can see here i'm trying to develop all of the larger feathers as one area i will be coming back and adding just a little bit of the indication of the space uh, where the feathers overlap just a little bit of the outline but again not going too much overall this was very fun and challenging experience for me to paint something new something different than what i'm used to it helps me to see things from different perspective to approach watercolors from different perspective try to develop new techniques or see how i can perfect already um, existing techniques um, to work with watercolors and um, i'm looking forward to trying more illustrations with animals or birds or insects feel free to give me any suggestions in the comment section below also feel free to check out my coloring book and see what other illustrations i have in there and if you want you can request another painting that i will do in watercolor from a coloring book and we can do that one together so at this point i want to say thank you to all of you who joined me for this painting i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions about the materials or any techniques that i used in this painting please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i will get back to you enjoy the rest of this painting and i'll talk to you soon bye
Solemn oaths with our blood that were signed. 